A good morning and a beautiful day to you guys from wherever you're joining us from around the world. We just want to say thank you for logging in. If you're new, welcome to the family. We hope that you are blessed. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We hope you guys are going to be blessed by the word. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is that... Um, it says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And, you know, I just hope that the word that you're about to hear is the same for you. I hope it nourishes you and nurtures you. Please make sure to get your notebook and your pen and get ready to write down some amazing word. We thank you guys for joining us. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for, the, uh, for this uh, moment of joining us as we look into the word of God. It's a joy and a privilege to be with you. Hallelujah. Praise be his holy name. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you that the entrance of your word gives light. Thank you for uh, your word. Thank you that you will unveil to us, it to us, and, and speak to us and minister to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Since Pentecost Sunday, we've been looking around the topic of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we had a look at the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We had a look at... Uh, um, the Holy Spirit, um, and uh, and uh, uh, and reflected on Pentecost, the history, and everything else. Uh, this morning, I want us to talk. Uh, I've, I've entitled my message concerning prophecy and prophets, concerning prophecy and prophets. Particularly in Africa, I'm not too sure wherever you are in in the world, but particularly in Africa, uh, there's been a, a surge. Uh, and uh, in, in terms of the interest uh, in the prophetic, a lot of people are rising up, calling themselves prophets, other prophetesses. Um, there's been a lot of, of that in our day. But um, it's subsided a little bit, but it's still there. Um, there's been a surge in the interest in the prophetic. Sadly, though, there's been a lot of extremes, a lot of false prophets, um, and therefore, it is necessary to be able to speak into that and look at what the word says. And uh, unfortunately as well, a lot of saints, a lot of believers are out there just moving from one meeting to another meeting looking for the prophetic, looking for prophecy. And uh, there's been other extremes in terms of how services are handled. Um, and, and so it's important to, to, to therefore look into the word, like I said. We, we, we're going to look at the simple gift of prophecy and look at the, a little bit on the prophetic office, the prophetic office under the fivefold ministry giftings. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, Paul writes, says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. He was talking to the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church is one of, uh, was one of the uh, immature churches that Paul wrote to. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he writes to them. Actually, the book of 1 Corinthians is a book to correct them in the way they were doing things. But in chapter 3, he, cor he, he s corrects them. He says, uh, because they were, it was almost like a competition. Others would say, I'm of Apollos. And others say, I'm of Paul. And then Paul writes to say, you, you, are, you, 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 you are not doing well. You, you, you are acting like canal, mere, Chris, mere fleshly ruled Christians. They, so that, that's the level at which they were. And uh, obviously in one other uh, later, uh, chapter, he writes that there was somebody that was having sexual relations with their stepmom. Step and so the, in one other instance, when they were having communion, they were competing. Uh, almost uh, others bringing in their bread and loaves and, and commit, competing. Um, and Paul writes to them, no, 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 no. That's not how you have communion. Don't you have places to eat at home? You, you eat at home. Communion is not to be handled in that manner. So the point I am raising is the Corinthian church was one of the immature churches. Um, but yet, if you read, he writes 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where we get most about the gifts of the Spirit. He was correcting them, but in essence, that immature church was walking and moving in the gifts of the Spirit. And so here is one of our most important uh, lessons to learn. That 
moving in the gifts of the spirit is not a sign of spiritual maturity. I will repeat myself. Moving and operating in the gifts of the spirit is not a sign of spiritual ma maturity. Spiritual maturity is not measured by how one flows in prophecy or in miracles. No, no, no. no. Spiritual maturity is measured by the fruit, character. Jesus says you will know them by their fruit, not by their gifts. So let's have that in mind. Why is it important to know that? Because sometimes you will meet people that flow in the gifts but exhibit almost an uh, an Christ like character and you get perplexed or confused but but why no 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 the reason is because flowing in the gifts of the spirit is not a sign of spiritual or christian maturity let's remember that so paul writes in first corinthians chapter 14 he says desire spirit spiritual in the king james the word gifts is in italics indicating that the translators put it there to to give clarity to to the text but it should read desire spirituals the word spirituals there is the word charismata which is the word translated the gifts of the spirit but then he says especially that you might prophesy i i, I believe he says you especially that you might prophesy because it's easier to flow in the gift of prophecy once you flow in the gift of prophecy then it will be easier to flow in the other gifts, the power gifts, the, the other uh, revelation gifts. Amen. Then he says in uh, chapter, uh, verse 39 of chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. Hallelujah. Desire earnestly. In, chap in chapter 14, verse 1, he says, desire the spiritual gifts. So there is nothing wrong with desiring the spiritual gifts. It's scriptural. Desire that. Endlessly desire that. He says in, in verse 39. Um, I, I've said it in one of our messages that during the healing revival in America around about 1944-45 as the World War II was ending, um, Kenneth Higgins Sr. speaks of how there was a, a, such a hunger for the gifts of the Spirit. And people were praying for that. And then God answered the prayers of the saints. And we saw the healing revival. Um, now, so those are some of the fundamental things to, to, to note. I want to also read in First Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul writes about concerning spiritual gifts. He says in chapter 12 verse 1, Now concerning spirituals, charismata. I don't want you to be ignorant. So he doesn't want us to be ignorant. Uh, please be reminded that uh, on our page there is uh, teachings that we've done in the past on the gifts of the spirit, the power gifts, the revelation gifts, the um, the, the, the utterance gifts. Uh, you can refer to those. He's, so he doesn't want us to be ignorant. Verse 3 he says, therefore I, I, I want you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. To put it in simple English, in this verse 3, what he's saying is, whenever the gifts of the Spirit, of which if somebody is in the prophetic office, the gifts of the Spirit will also be flowing. Whenever they are in operation, they always point to the Lord Jesus. That's another way of judging. Uh, they always point to the Lord Jesus. Whenever the gifts are in operation and you see it's a man that is lifted up, something is wrong. The gifts of the Spirit are not given so that we have uh, med medals. In, 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 I think in Shona they call it Nyembe, where you have medals to say, hey, did you see how I flowed? How deep my prophecy was? No, no, no. That is not the essence of the gifts. The gifts point to Jesus. Jesus is the one who's lifted up. Whenever one is saying uh, is moving, they would say Jesus is Lord. It's by the Holy Spirit. So it's important for us to remember that. Hallelujah. 
we're just looking at concerning prophecy and and the prophetic and the prophetic office um now the simple gift of prophecy any believer can flow as long as they are baptized in the holy spirit the baptism in the holy spirit is the doorway to the, all the gifts of the spirit and that simple gift of prophecy is given um for edification exhortation and comfort according to first corinthians chapter 14 um and uh, in chapter 12 we are told that the manifestation of the spirit is to profit other people hallelujah but i want to say that in many instances where because let me put it this way there is no fake count uh, there's no fake 25 us dollar why is there no fake 25 US dollar? Because there is no genuine 25 US dollar. There is no... So wherever there is something fake, it means there is the genuine thing. So they, they, wherever there is something counterfeit, it means there is the real item. So wherever we talk about the, 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 the things of the spirit, the enemy also creates counterfeit uh, things that uh, imitate the things of God. Remember when Moses threw his rod onto the ground with the uh, uh, before Pharaoh? Pharaoh's magicians also do, did the same thing. Um, and so we, we, we need to understand that wherever there is the, 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 the genuine, the enemy will throw in the counterfeit. But the counterfeit should not make, should not cause us to draw away from the genuine the real stuff. But unfortunately, in the past few years, that is what has happened. The counterfeit has caused people to withdraw from the real stuff. And so Satan also can foretell events and make predictions. But does it, that doesn't make th the predictions of God. There is the spirit of divination. Uh, remember that woman in Acts chapter 16, the young girl, who Paul cast out the spirit, uh, spirit in, in, in the Bible says the spirit of, a, another version says the spirit of a python. She was able to foretell and the people that handled him made, so, made money through him such that when the demon was cast out, they were very angry because their source of livelihood, that their source of income had gone. So Satan does uh, uh, foretell future events. You, we have all heard of Nostradamus, uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, visions and prophecies that they, he had way back then, Nostradamus. And so, but that should not make us draw away from the real stuff. So each one of us can move in the prophecy as long as we are baptizing the Holy Spirit. We can, uh, uh, the gifts of the Spirit can flow through us, including prophecy. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31, for, talking to the Corinthian church, for, for you can all prophesy one by one. So we can prophesy. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But uh, let me do say that whenever prophecy comes, the Bible gives us the mandate to judge it. We, prophecy must be judged. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9. Why? tells us why it must be judged. The reason is because currently where we are, we know in part and we prophesy in part. So prophecy must be judged. No, we don't know everything. So we must judge prophecy. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 says, test all things. Hold fast that which is good. Test all things. The New American Standard Bible of that verse says, examine everything carefully. It's talking about prophecy. Uh, uh, rather, it, uh, prophecy included. Examine everything carefully. The word in that verse, in, uh, in chapter 5, verse 21 of 1 Thessalonians, the word test is the, word, is the Greek word dokimo, dokimazo. It means to examine, to discern, to scrutinize. To see whether a thing is genuine or not, as we do with metals. In our in Zimbabwe here, we have uh, artisanal miners. 
makorokozas. They have what they call gold detectors. I've never used one, um, but that is used to when they are uh, using it. It's it, they help it. They use it to detect gold so that they they mine if they are looking for gold so that they mine gold. So that's th the word test means that. I'll read it again. It means to examine, to discern, to scrutinize. I like the word scrutinize. To see whether a thing is genuine or not. So this involve, includes prophecy, brothers and sisters. Just the way like we do with metals. So all this nonsense of saying, touch not the anointed. I was about to say to hell with it. But uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is, when you are testing, you are not touching the anointed of God at all. We, we are doing what the scriptures require or us to do. Scrutinize whether a thing is genuine or not. Uh, actually, the New King James Version, uh, rather, let me read the King James Version of 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, try the spirits. Try the spirits. Wow. I like that. The New King James then says, test the spirits. Test them. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 21 says, talking about prophets coming to prophesy, let the others judge or let the others weigh what is said. So prophecy must be judged, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. There is no genuine prophet who will have difficulty with prophecy being judged. Hallelujah. I remember years back when we used to have, uh, when we had uh, uh, presbytery after the teams had prophesied the presbytery team it would normally be about three or so prophets prophesying on an individual after prophesying the individual of whom it was prophesied would write down all the prophetic words would transcribe because we'll be recording after transcribing you come to the pastors we look at, at it we, 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 we examine it we, 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 we look at and 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 and, to, and, to, and and look at what what was said. So, so there is no genuine prophet who will have a difficulty with being judged. Any genuine genuine minister or prophet will be uh, should be uh, happy with the process of judging. The nonsense of touch not the anointed. That verse actually, in the Old Testament, in the Book of Psalms, was referring to the whole nation of Israel. It was not talking about a, a, a soul individual, a soul minister, a soul prophet. No. God was warning the other tribes around it to touch not my anointed, meaning the nation of Israel. So let's not misuse scripture, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just laying it straight. Let's have a look at the office of a prophet. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. What we, bi we Bible scholars call the fivefold ministry giftings. Uh, the grace giftings, the, the gifts from Jesus himself. He says he gave of himself. He, he had all of these in himself, five of them. But he then when he ascended on high, he distributed himself. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why were they given? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Saints are not dead people. Saints are believers. Saints are not the Zimbabwe saints, the football team, uh, the, the defunct football team in Zimbabwe. Saints are believers. Uh, it says it's for the equipping of the believers. The word equipping means katat is the word Greek word katatismos, to equip the saints, to 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 enable them, to train them, to 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 give them the ability to be able to minister. So it means. Besi if somebody is in the prophetic office, besides giving prophetic words, the other, uh, um, the other duty is to equip the saints to be a prophetic people, to equip the church to be a prophetic church. In other words, you train them how to move in the prophetic. The, 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 the gifts should not, unfortunately, what has happened in our day right now with the prophetic, it's like we've moved back to the Old Testament where People are going to uh, gatherings and wanting to hear a word from God through the prophet. First and foremost, fundamentally, God speaks to us, each one of us, through the, through the word. His word. He's given us his word. 
Hallelujah. Secondly, the inward witness. And then prophecy can come on. But we've shifted the goalposts. It's now, we, we, we've changed the priesthood of the believer. Uh, we, we are focusing on hearing Papa prophesying. Prophesy, Papa. Go deeper. No, 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 no. That's not the essence. The essence is not to, to, to disenfranchise the, 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 the believer in their priesthood. Each one of us are priests. Now, understand me. The prophetic office is its place. Uh, and uh, we must honor that. We must accept that. So, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13 is the one that tells us of the fivefold ministry giftings. These are grace giftings. And there is also the grace gift of the office of the prophet, which is part of the fivefold ministry giftings. Genuine prophets are scriptural. We need to embrace the genuine prophetic. But there is a false prophetic that we have seen uh, in abundance in Zimbabwe and uh, the whole of Africa. It's been on the, on the rise. I've got three different he, uh, words here, Hebrew words that speak about, uh, that describe a prophet, but I'm not going to go into detail with that one. We'll leave it for another day. But essentially, a prophet speaks forth God's voice in contemporary situations for immediate applications, but also foretells the future. They foretell the future. I remember I've got prophetic words that have not yet come to pass. They are still in the future. I have shelved them. I've put them on a shelf in my mind. When they do come to pass, I will retrieve the file in my mind and begin to read it. Prophetic, the prophetic in our day is not meant to, to take the place of us hearing from God. It's meant to confirm what God has said to us. In other words, some of the things that have been spoken, uh, like I said for me, they are in the future. I've shelved them. I've put them in a file in my mind. When, when, when God speaks, I will retrieve the file and say, oh, okay, that's what it meant. But some of them I already identify with them. I know. Uh, even though it's not yet come to pass, I will know it will come to pass. But the, 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 the prophetic office is not meant to be the guide for us on a day-to-day -day basis. We are supposed to hear the Spirit of God speak to us. We are supposed to read the Word and hear God speaks to us. Speak to us. Amen. The other thing to remember is that just because someone prophesies does not necessarily make them a prophet. This we see in Acts chapter 21 verses 8 to 14. It says on the next day, this is, remember Luke, Dr. Luke, Doc Luke, writing. Uh, and he says on the next day, we, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. As we st notice, four virgin daughters who prophesied. Were they prophetesses? No. They were just daughters of Philip the evangelist. But they prophesied because you can all prophesy. Every believer can prophesy one by one. Verse 10, and as we stayed many days, a certain prophet, that's the distinction, named Agabus, came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet and said, <coughs> this is what the Holy Spirit is saying. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with, with him not to go up to Jerusalem. But Paul answered, what do you mean weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord. So when he would... When he would not be persuaded, we, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. Uh, notice Paul was told he was going to be bound, but it was, he, did, he didn't back down. On, it, he, just, he was just warned, but he says, I'm ready. And he, obe he went forth. And that's how he wrote some of the prison letters. Amen. Hallelujah. So sometimes uh, that's, prophecy comes in that manner. Agabus is referred to as a prophet. But the daughters of Philip are described as those who could prophesy. They are not described as prophetesses. In our day in Africa particularly, we have a few people that have done a few prophecies. The next thing, they are prophetesses. There are others that are wives of prophets who also now call themselves prophetesses. I do not know. 
Maybe they are, but some might not be. It, because you are married to a prophet does not necessarily make you a prophetess. And because you are married to a prophetess does not necessarily make you a prophet. The grace of the grace gift must be there. Hallelujah. So there is the simple gift of prophecy which the four virgin daughters of Philip moved in. And then there is the office of the prophet that Agabus moved in. Every born again believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues can move in the simple gift of prophecy. The office of a prophet is a higher calling, higher anointing. And, and that anointing flows more regularly in the, uh, 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 in the pro prophet than in the average believer. It is even more predictive, t foretells the future. Hallelujah. Uh, Kenneth, e, uh, Kenneth Hagin Sr. said in one of his books, describing his own experience, that a prophet, uh, besides the gift of prophecy, also has revelation gifts operating regularly through them, like the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the descending of spirits. Amen. Uh, so it's important to know that. But the other thing, I didn't put the scripture down here, Concerning Agabus, we read in the book of X where Agabus prophesied about a famine that was coming uh, in, in, in the land. And then when he prophesied about the famine, what happened is that they began to prepare food relief for the saints and they sent the food relief. I want you to notice, prophecy always, that's how it works. In our day, we have people who prophesy, who call themselves prophet. And they prophesy about, a, uh, well, a lot of the uh, clips, video clips that come come after the event, not before. A, 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 an aeroplane falls off the sky. The next thing what we see is a video clip retrieved from two years ago uh, or early in the year to say uh, on crossover, so and so prophesied that the plane was going to fall from the sky. And then what? what what's the purpose of prophesying that a plane is going to fall? Because here Agabus prophesies about a famine and something is done to alleviate the famine. What is the point of prophesying about planes falling from the sky? And not, I believe when go, if God gives a, a, a prophecy, there must be action either to, to stop that or to pray against it, not just to prophesy so, or so that the prophet uh, is then hailed to say, hey, she, they, are, they are deep, they, they can hear from God. No. We say it whenever the gifts are in operation, they point to Jesus, not to the man or to the woman. So prophesying about planes falling off the sky and retrieving video clips from two years ago, six months ago, does not cut it for me. It's unscriptural. It doesn't help anyone. Unless you are, try you are moving in the spirit of divination and trying to gain marks for yourself and to gain a following. To say, ah, they can hear from God. It's that God doesn't work that way. That's not the prophetic word that comes from God. Agabus, there was a, an alleviation or caring. They prepared food relief for the people. That's how the prophetic works. And so we need to be careful with, us, what's up, with what's happening in our day. A lot of crazy stuff going on, which is unscriptural and it's not in the word of God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, here are a few misconceptions that I've seen concerning the office of the prophet. Again, in terms of, like I said, a lot of this stuff is subsided, but in terms of what has been happening, <coughs> just because someone calls themselves a prophet does not necessarily make them one. Hallelujah. We need to not rush to go after titles. I've seen some chips, 19-year-old prophets, hey, God bless them. But uh, uh, people, too, people are, are too quick to, 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 to go after titles. Margaret Thatcher, the uh, former British Prime Minister, once said, if you have to prove that you are a woman, you are probably not. So uh, let the gift speaks for, speak for itself. If the grace is there, even if the title is not there, the anointing will prove that you are one. Stop. Now I'm not saying don't call yourself a prophet. I know the verse that says receive a prophet, prophet uh, and you'll receive the gift of a prophet. I'm not, I'm, I understand that. But I'm, I'm seeing a lot of stuff going on where people just rush after uh, titles. Apostle, 
so quick to call yourself an apostle. Uh, the other thing that we need to remember is that the prophetic no office is not above the other fivefold ministry giftings. I repeat myself. The prophetic office is not above the other fivefold ministry giftings. The prophetic on, pro office is only one part of the body of Christ, of the fivefold ministry giftings. It is not the brains that control all. Ish, this is heavy stuff. I'm saying it is, I'm, I'm laying it down. The, the, the prophetic office is only one part of the body of Christ, one part of the fivefold ministry, not, not the brains that controls all. Prophets do not have a franchise on the voice of God. Ish, it's heavy stuff. Prophets don't have a franchise on the voice of God. We all know of reputable prophets in a year, years back that gave prophetic words in America about Donald, Donald Trump winning elections four years ago. He didn't win them. I'm not sure whether some of them apologized, but we know there are, there are people who prophesied he was going to win four years ago in the last uh, in the other election, not this year. We're not talking about this one, this one that's coming. Uh, the one that Joe Biden won. We know reputable chaps, some that we counted on, they prophesied that Trump was going to win. He lost. But did they, I hope they apologized. The point I'm making is prophets do not have a franchise on the voice of God. They are not the sole custodians of the voice of God. Amen. Hey, this is heavy stuff. Write it down. It will help you in the future. Prophets are not the sole custodians of the voice of God. Hallelujah. Here's another point. Here's another point. Just because somebody is gifted prophetically or otherwise, it doesn't make them infallible. In other words, they are still human. It doesn't, they, they are, it doesn't make them infallible. There is only one who is the Alpha and the Omega, who is Jesus Christ. And we need each other in the body of Christ. That is why in local churches, the Bible speaks of team leadership. A team of elders led by a senior elder. Prophets must be subject and, 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 and bring themselves under the leadership of the, the, those local churches that they are ministering into. Just because one is anointed as a prophet also does not make them an incre a, 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 rather a credible Bible scholar. Because you prophesy doesn't mean you know the Bible. <laughs> because you are in the office of the prophet doesn't mean you know the Bible. Amen. Doctrine, the Bible, uh, the, 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 the doctrine is not formulated by prophets. We don't create doctrine through prophets. We create doctrine through the Bible, through the scriptures, through the study of the scriptures. What does the Bible say? What saith the scriptures? It is given to us for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be uh, 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 equipped to minister. It's the Bible, not prophets. Important stuff to remember. So, because somebody is anointed, either as a prophet or maybe as an evangelist or moving in, a, in apostolic wonders and signs, doesn't make them a credible Bible scholar. Doctrine is formulated through getting into the word, th through the scriptures. That is why the Berean Christians uh, uh, looked and checked whether what Paul was saying was so. That's how that's the mentality we ought to have. We said we read earlier on what it says, test the spirits, examine everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, again, having the gift of prophecy or moving in the prophetic office does not ensure that a person also has the gift of teaching. There are others who would have that. Prophecy and then teaching. I'm remem I remember reading uh, the bio. Was it a biograph, autobiography of Gordon Lindsay, the founder of Christ for the Nations? What was it? 20th century Barnabas. That was the title of the book. But he was writing about all the move, moves that happened during the healing revival. F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth, uh, Alexander Dowie, uh, all of those giants, T.L. Osborne, um, William Branham. But he did mention, for instance, uh, the fact that William Branham, before he w moved away from what God is, essentially was a prophet. Uh, I'm not talking about he, the latter part of his life. That's why he ended up dying, according to Kenneth Hagin Sr. He, he say, Kenneth Hagin Sr. says he actually 
gave him a word to tell him when he was going to die. Was it Christmas Day or Boxing Day? Uh, but the reason was being he was moving and veering off his primary calling of being a prophet, venturing into teaching. And he, as he was venturing into teaching, he was moving into error because he didn't have the gift of teaching. So we have prophets that are prophets but not, do not, not having the gift of teaching. Such prophets should bring under them and with them to minister with them. People that have the uh, gift of teaching and be able to teach the scriptures and then they can prophesy. I also am against uh, regular meetings, maybe months going on where people are just prophesying, the no preaching of the word. Ah, no. How, how, do you, how, how does that work? It doesn't work. There must be the preaching of the word. We must have altar calls for people to be saved. You can't have a, cru a, a, a crusade with, for signs and wonders and you don't have an altar call. Why? What, what for? The, the reason we have signs and wonders is to draw people to the Lord. So you, 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 you have a mass crusade, you are praying for the sick, no, cru no, no, no salvation altar call. For, for what? Why, why are you doing that? The reason the miracles are there is to draw people to the Lord. So it's important for us to, to, to understand that. A, 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 and so one can have the prophetic gift and not be a teacher. But others can have both prophetic gift and teaching. So it's important for us to differentiate. It's important for us to know our strengths. If you are in the prophetic office, not only, I'm not on, here it's not only prophetic office. You, it could be other offices again. But today we are zeroing in on that. Uh, and if you don't have the gift of teaching, leave, leave the teaching to the teachers. Don't teach when you are not equipped to teach. Otherwise, you will move into error, teach people in uh, error, and come up with erroneous doctrines. Hey, this is heavy stuff. We need to, to hear that and to, to, to move in that. So there are those that would have both. The other thing that we see with the prophetic is that uh, sometimes, not prophetic, uh, just a statement that, God blesses a ministry in response to faith and an open heart, not as a result of a flawless doctrine. You can have, that's why there is error. Uh, but it's important for us to know the word. Mm -hmm. That's why we said it says test. Nothing like touch not the anointed. Test, judge, prophecy. What is not of God, throw away. Eh, that's, that's what we need to do. Uh, but sometimes also we notice that when people are fascinated by the prophetic, it's always easy to assume that there are some character traits or, pe uh, or, or preachers or the traits uh, and, and doctrines that can end up people thinking that this is part of the anointing and revelation that God is restoring. Sometimes it's not. It's just the preacher, the vessel that is uh, exhibiting some of those things. So it's important, therefore, uh, brothers and sisters uh, that we understand that we, 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 this is, these are some of the things we need to know concerning the, the prophetic. In our day we must understand we don't have canonical prophets. Canonical C-A-N-O-N-I-C-A-L What do I mean by that? The word canon in the Greek spoke of a measuring reed. When we talk of scripture the Bible, we speak of the canon. The canon of the scripture speaks of the books that we believe were inspired to be part of the Bible. The Apocrypha is not part of the Bible. The book of Maccabees is not part of the canon that we believe in. Uh, it, it, the, we have 66 books. The, the, in the other books, th in other words, there is no prophet in our day that will add another book or verse to the Bible. It is complete. We don't have canonical prophets. The Bible is complete. No one will speak and add on another. But we have 66 of them. They are enough. We judge using those. Anyone who wants to add on other, another book, they are in error. And we throw away what they say. Amen. So we don't have canonical uh, uh, prophets in our day. Hallelujah. And... Uh, when we are judging the message, we must remember. Uh, let me let me see. Okay, let me let me look at when we when we look at judging a prophecy. 
when we look at the person who prophesies, these are things to look at. Is Jesus Lord of this person? The person who's giving the prophecy. Is the person filled with the Holy Spirit? Whether it's a prophet or an ordinary believer. What is their lifestyle like? Are they walking in holiness? Do they have the fruit of the Spirit? What are their motives? Do they submit to a local church or their lone rangers? What, uh, because accountability is essential. What's their track record? Have previous prophecies proven accurate? Or they are always of, of, of what kind of fruit comes from their ministry? And then we judge also the objective. Is Jesus glorified in this prophecy? A plane fell off from the sky. How is Jesus glorified? Is Jesus glorified? And then we look at the source. Is this prophecy from God? Because there are three sources. Prophecy can come from God. Um, let's say the Holy Spirit. It can come from a demonic spirit. Or it can come from the flesh. You, you, you. Because sometimes a lot of these people have big crowds and because the, the, the gifts operate as the spirit will, sometimes the Holy Spirit doesn't move. And people feel pushed or under pressure to perform, under pressure to have something spectacular, under pressure to, to keep the people entertained. That's why we, if, there's, if the Holy Spirit says nothing, just stick to the word. The word is enough. Don't create uh, tricks to keep people. Actually, some, I've noticed some of these crowds that go from these they look for spectacular. They, they, they're almost like a rented crowd. They, if one more anointed comes, one more who's, who looks more powerful, that crowd moves and they go to the one who's more powerful. They, they, they are not loyal. <laughs> uh, this is heavy stuff. We, 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 but we need to listen. They are not loyal. They jump from their spiritual tourists. You know, tourists. Tourists just come to. They are spiritual tourists. They jump from one one place to another. This 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 kind of crowd. That's what they are. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, uh, when we then look at, uh, I've talked about looking at the person, but but when we then look at uh, the message that is given, when we're judging the message. Uh, whether be given by a prophet or an ordinary person, we ask ourselves, is the prophecy in line with the letter and the spirit of scripture? Is this in line with the letter and spirit of scripture? You understand what I'm saying, the spirit of scripture? Uh, uh, is it in line with the letter, with the written one, and the spirit of scripture? The Holy Spirit can contradict himself. There's no prophecy that will come and say, and, 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 and speak against and contradict what is in the Bible. So that's the judging point. That's why it says test, examine everything. Just scrutinize. Is it in line with the letter and the spirit of scripture? If it has predictions, do they come to pass and lead people to God? Like the drought one in X that we, we did. Does the message give hope? Because God is love. He's not coming to, to, to put us into despair. The other thing is, what is the witness of the Spirit? Sometimes you might not have a verse to, to, to pick to say it contradicts this verse, but something within you says, ah, ah, something. You know what? I don't know, but I know. I feel something is wrong here. That's the witness of the Spirit. Romans 8, verse 16. What is the witness of the Spirit? Sometimes we don't have a verse, but you can pick to, no, 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 no. Something not right here. So that's how we judge the message. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching re uh, real good. Here's a few safeguards. We must elevate the written word of God above all gifts, including prophecy and prophets. Elevate the word of God above every gift, whether it's the miracular. That's what we must do. People should hear God for themselves. What does God say to you? Because the priesthood of the believer still exists. What is God saying to you? The prophetic office is meant to confirm what God has already spoken to me. We are not living in the Old Testament where some high priest goes to hear God on my behalf. And then I go and ask like Samuel to say, hey, wh what is God saying? No, 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 this is not Old Testament. We are in the New Covenant. Some things, if you just apply the word of God, you will solve some things. 
instead of running from one meeting to another looking for a prophetic word. Just apply the word. Amen. This is heavy stuff. Receive it. Amen. We must elevate Jesus above all personalities. Jesus, including ministers with dynamic gifts or with forensic prophets. Exalt Jesus. A lot of these chaps that follow these prophet guys, they are fanatic. They can actually kill for their prophets. Like what Julius Malema says, with that we, are, we, are going, we, we, we will kill for Zuma. A lot of these chaps that are in these churches can kill for their prophets. If you criticize them, they will come after you. They exalt the prophet above the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> receive, receive. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in order heaven. We must elevate Jesus above all personalities. It doesn't matter whether they raise the dead. Jesus raised the dead. Elevate Jesus above your preacher. Jesus is more important than your preacher. Some people are now literally worshipping prophets. I've seen videos of people kneeling down. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Where does that come from? Nonsense. We need to get rid of such stuff. We must respect the local church under the leadership of pastors and elders as the primary place for ministering prophets. These chaps that rock into town and book the, the, the stadium and large city hall and a prophetic night, who, where who we are submitting to who? Where is the local church in there? These are the chaps that bring problems into the body of Christ. <laughs> so we, I'm talking to us as believers. Let's, let's be careful of such such cowboys that come into town and 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 and, and want to act like they are men of the men of power for the hour nonsense <laughs> we should not be running from one conference to another looking for prophets hallelujah manzani musalaveda salavadi salavadas to sungomukotari ish anyway i think uh, 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 let me just bring this to a, 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 an end um, in terms of I think some of the stuff I've spoken about it in the past where people now put emphasis on objects, oil um, and uh, in ob wristbands and all of nonsense let's believe the Bible is, is clear, oil is used but there is excessive use of anointing oil. Uh, w let's move away from such things. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. Despise not prophesying, says Paul. Therefore, desire earnestly, the spirit, uh, desire earnestly to prophesy. We must pursue the supernatural. There is the genuine. Like I said, Whenever there is a counterfeit, means there is actually the genuine. You can't have a 25, a counterfeit 25 US dollar. It doesn't exist. There is no ge genuine count. There, there is no real counter, real U 25 US dollar. So, the fraudsters and all of these mafia cannot create a, a, a fake 25 US or a 200 US dollar. There is not there. I, I, you can't create a counterfeit to an 200 US dollars. It's not there. So the enemy creates counterfeit for that which is there. But the counterfeit should not cause us to be afraid of the real stuff. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, says Isaiah, are for signs and wonders. God is a, is a, is a miracle working God. He's a God of signs and wonders. Let's pursue the supernatural. Hallelujah. If you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the first step is to accept him and believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. The Bible says if you do that, you will be saved. I encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Have a wonderful week. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen.